So good morning, everyone. Welcome back to Glomcon Transplant. Happy Sunday. And we're very excited today. We have uh, Dr. Kalis Khan joining us today. It's a great honor and pleasure for me to present in this Glomcon seminar today. Thank you very much for this opportunity. And the title of my presentation is Genetic Evaluation of Living Kidney Donor Candidates. I have no financial relationship or nothing to disclose regarding this presentation. I'm going to start with brief introduction on genetics and clinical use of genetics in nephrology. Try to explain risks associated with genetics after kidney donation. And I'm going to give you some case examples to discuss different types of genetic results in transplant nephrology practice. And I'm trying to give some algorithms to approach genetic testing in living donated donor candidate evaluation. And I will end with a the results from our consortium, Living Kidney Donor Genetics Registry. So I would like to start with a case that we saw in our transplant clinic after transplantation. This is a 65-year-old female patient developed end-stage kidney disease due to steroid and calcineurin resistant FSGS diagnosed in 2014 received a bunch of immunosuppressive treatment, unfortunately developed an ovarian cancer stage 2B which deferred her transplant evaluation. And after that, she was in remission in 2016, received a deceased donor kidney transplant in 2022. And we saw the patient after the transplant. When we saw, when we talk about the family history, we understood that the brother also has FSGS and also he's a kidney transplant recipient. Because of that, we decided to send a genetic test or do genetic testing and it came with a variant in collagen for a three gene. It was an heterozygous, likely pathogenic variant. And we found the same variant in the brother too. So we understood that this FSGS is related to collagen for a three a genetic variant. So most likely if we know this during the time of diagnosis of FSGS, this patient will, will not receive any immunosuppressive treatment and maybe would not develop cancer, we don't know, but so there's something important to know. The second patient is 32 year old female African-American kidney transplant candidate, again, diagnosed with FSGS in 2018 and received a lot of immunosuppressive treatment, including high doses of steroid. When we saw the patient, the patient stopped all medications because of side effects and because of that, the patient was labeled as non-compliant, which deferred her transplant evaluation. Because of the ancestry and the FSGS and the steroid resistance, we sent a genetic test for this patient. It showed the homozygous G1A Paul one risk variant in the patients, which is most likely the cause of FSGS. So maybe if we know it during the time of diagnosis, no need to give story treatment to this patient too. So after these two cases, I want to emphasize the importance of human genome project, which is started in 1990. And the idea was to map all the, all the human genome, the sequence whole genome. It was supposed to finish in 15 years. It finished completed earlier in 13 years and they sequenced 3 billion nucleotides. And with the knowledge we gained from human genome projects, now we are more understanding the genetics and genomics of human diseases, which we target on molecular diseases pathways. And our goal is to, to develop precise treatments to match the right patient with the right treatment at the right time. Interestingly, this project completed in 13 years. Now you can just sequence whole genome less than 24 hours. So besides whole genome sequencing, there are some other sequencing methods we use in our clinical practice, like targeted sequencing. You can also do whole exome sequencing. Why the exomes are important? Because we know the exomes are the parts of the genes which are important for protein synthesis, and they are most likely associated with the diseases, the kidney diseases, and, or the, all the genetic diseases. And around one to 2% of the whole genome are the exomes. Another important thing for the genetic sequencing is the cost. Just imagine in 2001, a whole genome sequencing was around.